Okay. Can uh, last year Air Force has some, pulled some trickery against you? You have to go into expecting anything and everything. Well, really, yeah. every year they do. Yeah. You know, every yeah. year they, you know, they got some good plays, and we just got to be, you know, good with our eyes. Um, this game always comes down to that. You know, what I mean, who can limit the big plays? Who can take care of the ball? You know, least amount of penalties. Two evenly matched teams, and you know, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes. They they threw for three touchdowns last year. Are you expecting, I mean, that kind of that kind of without Kale Pearson this year, different quarterback. What kind of you expect from their offense? Yeah, you know, and, and a, a couple of them. I mean, we should have been in good shape. You know, I mean, yeah. we just got our eyes wrong. Yeah. Uh, but we got to do better. You know, what I mean, because they do a good job. Play pass. Obviously, when you're good at running the football, play action becomes, you know, harder to detect. But you just got to make sure that your eyes are right. And then your depth at, at, at the defensive back. I mean, is that gonna? How much is that gonna help you with? You know, I mean, yeah, obviously have the starters, but then a bunch of young guys who contributed. Yeah, it, it, but it's gonna be a short game. We yeah. anticipated being a short game. You know, last week uh, we got nine possessions. UConn got ten, and I imagine it's gonna be similar. There've been yeah. times where we played Air Force and both of us got eight possessions. We're in an age where everybody's going up tempo, where everybody gets 15, 16 possessions. You know, we get in single digits. So, you know, plays are at a premium. Um, you know, mistakes get magnified when you don't get, you know, when you play eight, 90 plays as opposed to, you know, us playing 60, everything gets magnified. Uh, is Barter the punter after what happened Saturday? Barter's the punter. Uh, you've been pretty pleased with him? Yeah, he's done a nice job. I mean, he did really nice punt on that one. Another one was a you know, extraordinary uh, effort by Ryan Harris did a great job keeping it yeah, out. Right. So, you know, Alex has done a good job. With the Brandon muffing a punt, do you consider a change there, or is it premature to say that off of yeah, one? Yeah, we'll, we'll just continue to work. You know, I mean, it's been close with him and Calvin anyway. We'll see where we're at with that. But, we, you know, we'll just continue to work on that, get better at that, and you know, hopefully they both get better. Ken, you, you haven't lost to service academies a lot recently, but do those losses stick with you more than others losing the Air Force? Is that? Yeah, I mean, every mean, loss hurts. I mean, especially losing to them. You know, because, you know, there's great rivalry between us. We got great respect for them. They're a great program. And when you go against them, you know, you want to beat them just like they beat us. It's, but I've been playing them for a long time. I, um, at the University of Hawaii at Vegas, I've been at three schools that we've played them. So this is my 31st year playing Air Force. So it's just been playing them for a long time. As far as Keenan, I mean, we know kind of the legend started when he came off the bench against Air Force. Was losing to him, that them bother him more maybe than some other other players? He's a competitive dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a competitive dude, but we don't have any excuses this year. He's healthy. So, yeah. you know, we'll go and take our shot and see what happens. Could, could, in your wildest dreams though, when he took the field that first day against Air Force, could you have predicted what would follow? It's been extraordinary. <laughs> no. Hoping maybe, not predicting. <laughs> no. Especially, in, well, from that situation where we were actually kind of scrambling there, things looked bad for us in that particular moment. And since then, you know, not only him helping us win that game, but everything since, like you said, Keith, he's, he's been phenomenal. What did you see from him that day that maybe that, you know, maybe a week or two later, said, Damn, this may be more special might, we might even thought of? It was the first play. Uh, excuse me, the second play. He threw a slant, but then we threw a play action pass and he hit a safety valve that we didn't hit all of practice. But he went through his progression and had the wherewithal to go through his progression and hit the safety valve. That's like, okay, this guy's pretty special. Because you know most guys would have gotten there, couldn't remember his name, their names, and he was totally cognizant of what was going on. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Does uh, the lost Air Force kind of stick with you more than some others, given the surface academy rivalry and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's like one of our main goals every year. If you look on a truck, right on the back of the trailer, it says "Beat Air Force." So yeah. it's a big deal to us, you know. And uh, you know that that lost strong. And uh, you know, it's never losing isn't easy, regardless who it is. But you know, losing a surface academy rivalry game is, is tougher. So that's just you know motivation for us to just grind in all season and, and grind this week and try to get ready. Is that one of those games you just think of pretty much every day to get their next opportunity to get another crack at them after losing? I mean, really, we for the for the past few games, I've been focused on what we planned. But now that it's Air Force Week, you know, just evaluating what we did wrong. And, you know, it started with the turnovers, and that's something we talked about all season. Uh, it was turning the ball over, and, you know, we had an interception in the, in the end zone. Um, that was a huge play, and then we fumbled on our side. So, I mean, we, we turned the ball over, and, uh, you know, we didn't finish drives like we needed to. And that was the reason why we, we got beat. Um, you know, they had a great plan for us, and uh, we didn't execute well. So, you know, just looking at that, trying to evaluate our mistakes, and, uh, you know, going from there. They were pretty physical with you in that game last year. They were clearly wanted to, you know, put some heavy hits on you, and they did. 
Um, can you talk about that? Is that something you remember? <laughs> I mean, it's football. Uh, <laughs> that's how it is every week. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be a runner most of the time, so you, know, you got to keep being physical. I mean, that's the name of the game. And, and if you don't want to get hit, then you ain't going to last long. So, you know, it's part of it. Um, but, you know, I don't – I just, just keep playing, keep running the ball, keep running hard. But like I said, every week it's like that. Every week somebody's trying to knock my head off. Is, is the game magnifying even more knowing that you're a senior and this will be the, the last time you get to play him? Absolutely. I mean, but at the same time, you know, you just got to remember it's still football. Yeah. Um, nothing's changed. It's still a football game. The keys to winning are the same. So the biggest thing is not overhyping it, not getting too, you know, out of control, but, you know, staying calm, staying poised, and, and just doing your job. Is there extra motivation because of the fact that you weren't really 100% last year? I mean, you, you didn't give Air Force your full healthy Keenan Reynolds. Well, I mean, like I've said many times, I'll never use that as an excuse. Um, you know, I look back when I was watching the film today, you know, I, I felt like that that wasn't a problem. Um, I just didn't play well. Simple as that. And as a result, we lost. So, you know, I'll never be like, you know, oh, it was my knee or whatever the case may be. Um, they, they outplayed us that game and they got the best of us. Right, thanks, Keenan. Thanks, Keenan. Thank I want to talk to you a little bit more about what they were talking about on Saturday, with the depth of the defense, rolling guys in and out. I've talked to Dale and Coach Neamont about it, and it is a plan to try to play a lot of guys and keep guys fresh, especially those of you who are taking on blockers, the D-line, the outside linebackers, because that's a, a grind. Can you talk about that, and do you think it's a good idea? Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a, it's a bonus, you know. Um, if you don't have the depth to do it, you kind of got to go with what you got. Um, but, you know, we have guys who we can put in there, and we don't have any drop-off with those guys. So, um, you know, me, after a 15-play drive, is worse than Pat Forrestal fresh, you know, you right. know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'll do, I'll take most of the drive, and then when I'm starting to wear down, you know, there's there's a point the coaches know, like, how many plays each guy can take, and then, you know, we'll get guys rotating so we can stay fresh and not have any drop-off. So do the coaches just kind of send someone out and then you know, or do you ever have to tap the helmet and say, I need a rest, or how does that work usually? Um, you, you never tap tap out, but, you know, <laughs> you, you'll make eye contact with the coaches on the sideline, and they'll give you, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, and usually you give them a thumbs up uh, unless, uh, you know, you're really tired but they usually tell they do a great job um, you know they, they know us they know how many we can do and that's something we develop through our camp and stuff how many uh, plays a guy can take so so how many times do you come out like during a drive I mean do you figure you get maybe four or five plays off during a course of a game like UConn how many how many times did you get to come off the field while the defense was still on the field maybe five or six plays yeah something around there you know just uh you know, uh, drives are starting to lengthen out a little bit. You know, they thought they'd get, get me off for one or two plays, catch my breath, get a little shot of water, get back out there and uh, finish off the drive instead of just leaving me out there and being gassed if they, right. in case they get down at the goal line. And it does make a difference? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. It, it's hard to stay in there for, you know, extended 15, 16 play drive. And then, you know, when you get down at the goal line, you know, you're, you're not as fresh as you want to be, so. Okay. All right, great. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah, well, I'm doing a little story about the fact that you guys have been rolling a lot of guys on defense, and I talked to Dale at length about this, and he mentioned particularly at D-line and outside linebacker. Those are the ones that have to take on a lot of blockers and wear down. How do you play it? I mean, do you just kind of have a feel for when you feel like you got to get some guys out of there? Um, well, a little bit of it is, is game plan going into the game. Uh, you know, knowing exactly what their personnel is. So, uh, you know, we, we, we have the luxury of having some, you know, big, stronger, 235, you know, 40 pound, those, those Raider guys. And then we've got some guys who are a little faster, um, you know, a little more athletic, our strikers. Uh, so we, most of the time we're going to try to game plan. I mean, we're going to go into the game uh, knowing certain situations, knowing certain personnel uh, that they may bring in. That's where, you know, we can, kind of match up and, and relieve guys um, the other part of it is yes how are, how are guys playing you know what I mean if they're in a groove and they're doing good and, and, and we know the maybe the pace of play isn't as quick um, you know or, or the, the game isn't a pounding game uh, you know we can sub in there so it's just some of it's on the hip some of it's you know predetermined based off of personnel right and Dale had said though that he does believe in the philosophy of rolling a lot of guys to keep people fresh he just he thinks that works he's used it with the d-line for a number of years is that something that he has talked to you other coaches about and said you know if you can get more guys in there if you feel that you know, or is it each coach's decision well, I think it's it's a little bit of both. I mean, kind of like we just said. I mean, sometimes you got to go off the feel of it. But I think you know a dream scenario for any coach is you can have four or five guys that you can rotate in there. Sometimes, uh, you know, you don't have that luxury of of, of having the depth. Uh, I, I'm just I have good depth right now. I've got right. really you know three almost four guys at each 
Raider and striker position that I feel I could put in at any time. They've done a nice job picking up the package. Um, as, you, as you've seen during the UConn game, we had DJ playing some striker, which that's not his you know, normal position, but based off their personnel and, and what we thought they were going to do, uh, you know, we can dual teach teach the position, and there's, there is a lot of carryover um, in, in, in in some of our calls, there's there's a lot of carryover technique wise, um, you know. So it's, yeah. I mean, if if you can roll, you'd you'd love to have it, but but if not, you know, sometimes you just you can't do it. So. Right. The other thing I was going to ask you about was the RB. He's a you're kind of a, a, a coaching training here, uh, thrown into a tough situation of being asked to come out of a. Uh, office type role, an administrative role, and, and actually start coaching. How, how, what, have, what has been for you to try to help him, and how's he coming along? Uh, he, he's doing a great job, and I mean, anybody who knows Navy football knows he was a pretty good football player when he was here. So, um, you know, uh, you take a good football player, and just because maybe he's not in a coaching role for, for, for a, a certain amount of time, I mean, he still understands the game. Uh, he, he brings great knowledge because he was a defensive back, and, uh, you know, that's it's always good to have, you know, someone from the secondary end. Um, so he does work a lot with our strikers, um, you know, when we when we split up and do some individual specific drills uh, for those guys. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think RB has done a nice job. He, you know, like you said, he kind of kind of happened pretty quick and, mm -hmm. and uh, he just kind of jumped in with his feet running. And, uh, you know, he for a little bit there, he was just kind of like the players, you know, just kind of taking certain notes and, and all that stuff. Um, but uh, didn't, it didn't take him too long to get his coaching feet going. So. As he got to be more, I imagine that early on he was probably a little tentative to say stuff, <clears throat> deferring to you, because he was, you know, but is he starting to become a little more assertive? Well, he's a Marine now. He, yeah, he's, <laughs> right? he, he, he wasn't afraid to do anything. So, right? uh, no, you know, he just jumped right in. And, you know, we sat down and, and talked, really, the whole staff with him. And, uh, you know, the only way to get yourself going is, is, is to do it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and he got right in there. And, uh, you know, obviously, if, whether it's asking me or other coaches certain maybe questions or something and from the coaching standpoint, I mean, he's certainly not afraid to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and he, he really did a nice job catching himself up to speed. And, uh, you know, like I say, he's a, he's a Marine, man. We put him in there, he's going to get the job done. So. All right, perfect. Thanks. Thanks.